formal English gardens have been around for centuries and often include signature details such as straight lines, organized flower beds, and a place to sit and enjoy it all. Now whether big or small, installing an English garden is going to require a little bit of planning along with a little bit of a green thumb to do it right. Let's take a look what we need to do. First, before starting any project outdoors that requires digging, call 811 to have underground utilities marked so we can plan around them. Next, it's time to pick a location. English gardens tend to have a lot of sun-friendly plants, so you're going to want to pick a place that gets a lot of sun. Now, full sun is six to eight hours per day. This homeowner already started a garden, but wanted something with a little more character, so we're going to use the existing space. You don't have to be an artist to put your plan down on paper. When drawing your plan, use straight lines and symmetry to guide your design. English gardens typically feature boxy, manicured hedges. However, you can get the same look with less maintenance with raised garden beds. So that's what we've built into our plan. And to help keep the area defined, we'll install a picket fence around the perimeter. Another signature feature of English gardens is a focal point, either a water feature or a sitting area. We've added both to our design with a garden bench and a fountain. We've also put two small ornamental trees next to the bench. You can get the same effect with an arbor and a climbing plant like ivy. We've also included a garden path as English gardens are designed to be spaces you walk through and spend time in. You can use grass for your walkways, but just remember, it means you'll need to mow it. In our design, we're planning for a more natural, crushed stone path. And of course, we finished the design with lots of plants. With our plan mapped out, we can start measuring and prepping our area. Now we're taking advantage of this existing garden bed, but we're going to be extending it out a bit. Mark off the entire area using stakes and string. At the far corners, I made some batter boards so it would be easier to square up the layout. To do that, use the 3-4-5 method. Measure 3 feet along one string, 4 feet along an adjacent string, and adjust them until the diagonal equals 5 feet. Then mark the corners with a stake. Use landscape spray paint or stakes and string again to map out your boxes and walkways. This is just to check the layout. Now it's time to dig up some dirt, which is the perfect time to call a landscaper if your garden is large. We're digging our space down about four to five inches to accommodate the paper base. Shovels work too, but it's gonna take some time to finish. A landscaper can use some of the removed soil to help level out any low spots like we have at our corner. With the dirt removed, now is a good time to run any utilities such as electrical or plumbing for irrigation. You can always do this later, but you'll need to remove some paper base to bury the lines. With the utilities installed, we're going to tamp the soil to create a firm surface. You can use a hand tamper or a rented plate compactor. Next, cover the area with landscape fabric to help block weeds. Then cover the entire area with paver base to create a solid foundation, about two inches thick. Spread it out. Wet it. And tamp it down. Try to get the area as level as possible. A rotary level can be a big help. Just follow the directions and work it around the area. And we've left the base about a foot away from the perimeter for now, so we can dig our fence post holes later. After the paver base has been installed, reset any necessary strings to line up the raised beds. I attached a screw to the deck, then used the 3-4-5 method to square up the corners. Then I measured out the width of the walkway from the deck and set another string to keep the beds straight. In our garden, we're going to be installing raised beds using retaining wall blocks. Now, raised beds are great because you can fill them with soil that's probably going to be better for your plants than what's already in the ground. Set the blocks on the paver base, check them for level, and tap down if needed. Once a few blocks are level, adjust the strings to the top of the blocks and check it with a line level. Continue laying the blocks to form the shape of the bed. For the second course, stagger the joints and dry lay the blocks. If you need to make a cut, mark the block on all sides. Cut part way through on all sides using an angle grinder with a concrete blade. And finish the cut using a hammer and chisel. 
A rented wet saw can cut through the blocks fast. Mark the top of the block, line up the blade, start the saw, and make the cut. It works like a radial arm saw. Here's a tip. Use a hammer to distress the cut edges. When the second course looks good, remove the stones a few at a time to apply concrete adhesive underneath. Continue installing additional courses. Our blocks are about four inches high, so I'll use four courses. Build the other beds the same way. Next, I'm gonna fill the beds before I build the fence. I'm gonna be using a mixture of topsoil and compost. Now, if the topsoil that you took out of the space earlier is still in good shape, you can reuse it with some compost and potting mix. If not, you can buy it in the bag. You want a ratio of 60% topsoil to 30% compost to 10% of potting mix, or whatever the soil instructions recommend. We're using a mix specifically designed for raised beds. If you plan on having deep-rooted plants, remove some of the paver base inside the bed. Then just fill up the bed. I'm gonna add the plants later. To help define our garden area, I'm gonna be installing a wood picket fence. These come in eight foot sections and attach to posts. For the posts, I mark the layout, then dug the holes. I anchored them with concrete and let it set, then continued down the line. After a few hours, when the posts were secured, I filled in the perimeter with paper base. Now when we go to attach our fence panels, we're going to want them a couple inches above our yard, but we're also going to want them to be even. To check this, I found the high point in our yard and then made a mark, and then I used a string and a line level to get a straight line around our entire perimeter. Now if you have any low spots like we did down there, you can just fill them in with soil. I decided to install landscape edging before attaching the fence. Then I attach the fence using exterior screws. Make sure the bottom is a few inches above the ground. And make sure the joints line up over a post. You might have to remove some of the pickets to cut the posts. We're going to cut the posts close to the top of the fence with a saw. For our gates, I've just cut down some shorter sections of fencing and added this diagonal support brace to keep it straight. Then I'll secure the hinges and secure it to the post. Check the swing, then attach the latch. We've made our walkways four feet wide to keep them uniform throughout, but typically three feet is a good size that will not overtake the space. In most cases, our pathway butts up against our raised beds, but where it doesn't, I added the landscape edging. For our walkways, we're going to be using gravel. Ours is about a quarter inch in diameter, which is going to help with weed control, and it's going to be more comfortable to walk on. With our paver base down, we placed a layer of gravel about two to three inches thick. We raked it, lightly wet it, then tamped it down. Now comes the fun part, adding all the colorful plants. To start, place them where you want them to go. Work taller plants towards the center of the beds and work low-lying plants towards the front or closest to the walkways. Plan for plant growth as well. Every plant you choose should have information for size and spacing listed on the pot or tag. These tags will also tell you how big to make the holes for planting. Most English garden friendly plants are meant to fill in over time. However, with new plantings, you're gonna to wanna to spread mulch over the soil to help lock in moisture and nutrients. Mulch that's heavily ground will look and perform best. Keep the mulch layer thin too, only about an inch or two. Then water, and keep watering every day until the plants are established. You may want to consider setting up drip irrigation hoses to keep your plants moist, but not too wet and you don't want to bury the tips because they can get clogged. On the other hand, you can use a soaker hose just below the surface. 
for either system, use a timer to make watering even easier. One of the most signature plants in an English garden is the rosebush. Rosebushes add color and fragrance, so we're going to use them throughout our space. You'll also want to consider other flowers at varying heights. Daisies, lavender, and poppies are popular choices. We also add a Gerber daisy, which is an annual. You can add herbs like rosemary and basil for color, variety, and great aroma. We filled in low-lying areas with a ground cover called Creeping Phlox. Ornamental shrubs like boxwoods and different varieties add green all year long. Now we can add some more personal touches, like our garden bench and water fountain. Creating your own English garden is an effort that's going to pay off with hours of outdoor enjoyment. We took an ordinary backyard garden and added raised beds, stone pathways, a picket fence, and accessories to create an inviting garden retreat.